welcome back to learning DW Sim. Um, we're going to create a flow sheet for uh, ranking cycle that is a bit more complicated than the basic ranking cycle. So I'm going to start with create new. So I'm going to create a new uh, flow sheet using DW Sim. And again, I'm going to mention this is I'm on Linux, so this is what they call the cross-platform uh, UI. So your version might look a bit different, but um, you should have all the same options. So we have the simulation setup wizard. I'm going to use it and click next. Let me just bring this into view. And this allows me to just um, select the substance that's going to be inside my simulation. So I'm going to pick water like this and next. And then we'll have um, an option to select the property package. So I want to select use a specific property package. And there's really two choices. I could select cool prop, but it turns out that um, cool prop does take quite a bit of time to run. So if you want your, um, or the calculations take quite a bit of time. So if you want to run a bit faster, we're just gonna use the steam tables, which is a faster execution. We'll get the same answers. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this, so simulation name, I'll just leave it at my simulation one, the system of units, here I'm gonna leave it in SI and finish. Okay, so what system or what, um, what am I going to simulate? What cycle am I going to simulate? Let's do a, a one region cycle. So I'm gonna have, so at the top here, I'm gonna have a boiler. This is gonna be Q in and the steam coming out of the boiler, the reheated steam is going to go into a turbine. We're going to expand part way, then the output of this turbine is going to be split into two. And the second, this, um, the main fraction is going to go like so, out into a second turbine, down to my uh, lowest uh, pressure, which is going to be now the fluid that's fed into a condenser. We'll extract heat, Q out. So here are my turbines. You can give me workout two. This is going to be workout one. And the output of my condenser is going to go through a first pump. I have the work of pump one. And then the output will now rejoin with the extracted fraction, we're going to mix them and send them to a second pump. That's then going to pressurize my fluid up to the pressure of the uh, boiler. Here, let me label my states. It's gonna be state one, state two, state three, four, five will be after the boiler and six will be coming out of the turbine. This is a splitter, so it should be the same state out in both directions and then this will go to the second turbine I'll be a state seven there we go um okay i'm gonna stop annotating so let's start building this and really the main difference uh, between or the main addition in thinking when we build this to building this simple ranking cycle is where do i put the recycle block so I'm going to build this completely without a recycle block. It's not going to work if I do this. And then we'll add a recycle block, but I'll take a moment to think about where this should be uh, added. Let me just unclick the little green check mark so that the, the DW Sim now won't try to solve the flow sheet every time I add a new object. And I'm going to put pressure changers. I'm going to go in and put in a pump. So here's my first pump. And I'll put in a second pump. I'll try to put it far away so they don't connect to each other. There we go. Um, and I need, okay, I need a condenser. I'm gonna put in uh, exchangers. There we go. So cooler, so it's gonna be a cooler. I'm gonna put it, ah, oh, it automatically, automatically snapped, but that's okay. Here, I'm just dragging my flow sheet around. Here, let me go and fix this now. So I want, actually, here, let me turn this, uh, this object just visually. I'm just going to reorganize. I should be able to go to appearance, and I should be able to do a rotation of 180. There we go, 180 degree rotated. And I'm going to bring this. Actually, that's not, that's not the best. Uh, well, that's okay. And then I'm going to grab the stream here and I'm going to come here to appearance. 
I'm going to flip this. I think it's flip horizontally. I always forget if it's horizontally or vertically, I just have to try it. No, actually, there we go. So this one should be rotated 180, there we go. Now that looks good. And the condenser, instead of rotating it 180, we're actually going to flip this. There we go. Now this makes more sense. This is what I wanted. So the sort of the machine blocks, I'm going to flip horizontally and these I'm going to rotate. So now let me just unhook. So I want the output of the condenser to be two or I want the input, I want the input of the pump to be the material stream 12. So here I'm gonna select the pump, connection, inlet, I want this to be 12. And now they should connect. There we go, now that they are connected, here's the input of the pump and I can delete this extra material stream. There we go, we're going to delete this. I'm gonna right click, delete. Okay, now I have this loop. This is just because the outlet of the pump shouldn't be here, but let me go and put in a mixer splitter. And this is the two objects that allow me to do the regeneration. So um, here, let me annotate these. I'm gonna put a blue and a green box around them. So I'm gonna put the blue box here. This is my mixer. Right, this has two streams, the stream at state six and the stream at state two entering. They get mixed together and then they come out as state three. And then let me put a green box around it. This is my splitter. So the splitter has a single stream coming in at state six and two streams exit exiting at state six. So let me go and add. So let's start by adding the, I'm gonna, oh. sorry, I'm just trying to get my, and a tape tool to go away. So we're gonna come here to the mixer splitters and I'm gonna get a stream mixer. Drag it right over here. There we go. Let's see if we can make this a bit prettier. I'm gonna to come to appearance and let me rotate this. It should be minus 90. I think this should put it vertically. Uh, no, let's do 270. Just to have it point upwards. There we go. Like this, there's the outlet. So now I want, so I'm just trying to disentangle these arrows here so that they look a little bit better. Not that it matters all that much. Oop. There we go. All right. And let's see. The outlet of our pump is going to go to stream 14. So I'm going to select the pump, connections, outlet 14. This should readjust. And then outlet 3 will be only connected to the condenser. There we go. I'm going to make this a little bit prettier. I'm going to come here and I'm going to select the pump and go to the appearance menu. Here we go. Appearance. Let's rotate it 270 degrees. There we go. And our energy stream comes in. Now it looks pretty good. And now the outlet of the mixer is the stream 15. So this should be the inlet of the pump. You're gonna select, or the second pump, the high pressure pump. We're gonna select pump five and connection. The inlet will be stream 15. My interface is just a bit slow somehow when I'm using zoom at the same time. There we go. And we can leave the pump sort of over there. There's a way to make this a bit prettier, but in the instance of time, we'll just leave it as a little basic. 
There you go. And I'm just going to come here and delete this material stream that's left dangling. I'm going to right click and delete. Sorry, those delays are just from the interface. There we go. Delete. Yes. Perfect. Um, I'll just move here my material stream three. So it kind of looks like my figure. So now we have this left branch here. Or the, yep, the left branch, sort of the pump branch. And what do we want? So we want the output of the high pressure pump to go to a boiler. So let's go and select an exchanger. We're going to get a heater. Exchanger, heater, I'm going to drag and drop. There we go. There's my heater. We're going to add heat until it is superheated. And now the output of this will go to a turbine. So I'll get a pressure changer. I'm going to go into the pressure changer category and select a turbine. I'm going to select an expander turbine. Bring this over here. So this is my high pressure turbine. Here I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to be a bit. I'm going to be a little. Um, I'm going to be a little pointier about my. Uh, this is French. I'm sorry. I'm going to be a little bit overachiever, and I'm going to rotate my turbine so that the arrows point down so appearance here, i'm going to rotate the turbine by 90 degrees so where's the energy the energy is going to come out and then the arrow the output material stream 22 we're also going to rotate 90 degrees There we go. Select this is arrow 22. We'll go to appearance and a 90 degree rotation. There we are. So now we are at our green box. So here it's labeled 22, just from the order in which the elements have been created. But this is the stream coming out of the high pressure turbine at state six. And I want to go to a splitter. That's my green box. Go here in mixers, splitters. I'm going to select a stream splitter. I'm going to bring this here. And hopefully the inlet has connected. I'm going to select a splitter and I'll turn it 90 degrees so that our uh, so that our flow sheet looks kind of nice. Appearance, turn this 90 degrees. I'm going to take my, uh, let's take outlet 24, just so the lines don't cross. I'm going to take outlet 24, I'm going to drag it. Uh, I want to select object 24 and drag it to the other side, but actually I don't even, I'm thinking about it now, and I don't actually even need to do this. Um, I can just select my splitter, and I'm going to select that whatever connection is going to material stream 24, I'll just make it connect to out to the stream 13, which is the one of the inlets of the mixer. There we go. So we now have 21. And I'm going to select the connections tab, the connections tab, and then the outlet one, which is connected to 24. I'm going to connect this to 13. And now I should get the line to snap to the other side. And I'll be able to come here and just select our 13. And I'll just rotate this by 180 degrees. 
as soon as this appears, as this switches here in my tab. There we go, 13. I'm going to select appearance. And we'll rotate by 180 degrees, just so it looks nice. There we go. And I'll just bring it over here. And now that is my regeneration. That's my extracted fraction, which gets connected to my uh, mixer. I'm going to delete 24, which is now just dangling on its own. Oops. I'll right click, delete. Yes. Now the outlet of this uh, of this splitter is going to go to yet another turbine. So we're going to come here and select a pressure changer and a second turbine. This is my low pressure turbine. There we go. The um, uh, the flow out of the splitter, the remaining flow out of the splitter goes to um, my low stage turbine or my second stage turbine or my low pressure stage. Let us. Uh, we're going to rotate this. We're going to rotate this element just so it looks a little bit nicer. This is turbine 23. We're almost done. There we go. Appearance. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Our turbine has been rotated. I'll move my energy stream. That's the energy coming out. And then let's just connect the output of the turbine. I'm going to select it again. So these, there we go. The turbine is selected, properties, connections. And then I want the outlet instead of 27, it's going to be three. There we go. And now I can delete this extra material stream. It's a little bit hidden by the text there, but it's just hidden over here. Maybe if we just move the energy stream, I'll be able to select the element that's underneath. Right click. Nope. Right click. and delete yes there we are okay so now i've built my entire uh, flow sheet and here let me just let me add again let me just annotate i'm going to put a box so what allows me to do regeneration is this uh, extracted fraction here in the green box it's implemented with the splitter element in dw sim and the mixing at the other end is implemented by the mixer in DW Sim. Except now this is a cycle. Um, we actually have to um, we have to connect or we have to tell DW Sim that the fluid is recycled and comes back on itself. So there is a smart way of doing this. Um, we can basically what we have to achieve in order for the simulation to run well is we want to minimize the number of recycle blocks that we use. So let me first draw the number of loops that we have, right? There's, if, if you imagine, let's play a game where I'm actually a fluid element starting here after the pump and I'm marching through, I'm gonna go through, go through the heater and then I'll come down through the turbine like so. And then I'm going to take the path here where I go through the extracted, uh, sort of the extracted path and then back into the pump like that. So that's sort of one loop that I could follow. And I could also here, let me put a, I haven't, or this through this loop, this particular particle has not, um, it has not been, or it has not traversed all of the possible, possible paths inside uh, the cycle, right? The branch that goes through the lower pressure turbine, the condenser and the pump, these still haven't been visited. So let's imagine I'm another particle starting from the same location and I'm going to go through and then I'm going to go through the boiler and the high pressure turbine and I'm going to 
go through this other branch. We're going to go through the lower pressure turbine, the condenser, the pump, through the mixer. Then I would have to go straight through and come back. So these are the two loops that exist. And now the question is, where do I cut in order to tell DW Sim that we're actually going to, that the fluid is recycled? Well, I could cut, I could put two recycle blocks, right? I could cut this branch and put a recycle block over here and cut this branch and put a recycle block there. And now DW Sim would know that everywhere the fluid is recycled. The problem is that mathematically, this is not very stable. Um, so it's actually a bad idea to put these two recycle blocks. It will work, but not all the time. Every once in a while, the simulation will have a trouble completing. Instead, I can recognize that, oh, look at this. If I cut in anywhere on this top branch there, both of these loops actually share these branches together. So if I cut here and put a recycle block, then all the loops that a particle could traverse will go through the recycle block. And that single recycle block is then enough to solve the problem or to, to tell DWSIM that single recycle block is enough to tell DWSIM about all the possible recirculation paths that the fluid could take. So let's go and implement this. I'm going to come here and grab a logical block and a recycle block. I'm going to drag it up on top here and it shouldn't auto connect. There we go. And now I'm going to take the output of the pump and I'm going to say the output of the pump is the outlet instead of seven is going to be 27. Okay, then we'll take the heater and we'll say that instead of the inlet of the heater being seven, we'll set that to 28. And then once that updates, I'm gonna come in and delete this dangling material stream. We'll right click and delete. Yes. So now all we have to do, um, all we have to do now is to set some values. Okay. So here, let me just move these so that those lines stop crossing a little bit. And we'll set some values. So typically in your problems, we set the, or sort of the simplest way you could think of, of um, specifying your problems is to set the output um, temperature and pressure of the heater. So I'm gonna come here and select the heater. So we'll set the heater and I'm gonna to come to properties. And I'll say that the outlet temperature, I set it as outlet temperature, and I'll say it's an outlet temperature of oh, 450 Celsius. Or here, this is in Kelvin. So we'll set it as uh, 450 Celsius plus 273. So 723 Kelvin. Oops. Okay. So we said 723 Kelvin. Let me just come in. I'm just going to come in and erase. Actually, here, let me just clear all of the drawings since they don't quite line up anymore. There we go. So this was 723 Kelvin. Oh, for some reason. I think one, one thing that is slow is that for some reason, even though I ticked, unticked this green box, maybe this is disabled here, we'll see. So 723, now let me pick the 
pressure changer, the pump, and we'll put in the properties. And we'll set the outlet pressure of this pump. So we'll set it as outlet pressure, and we'll put this at five megapascals. So this is in pascals. We're going to put this at the outlet pressure at five million. Oops, this is the pressure increase. There we go, five million. And I'll set an efficiency of 100%. Make it an ideal cycle. This is the adiabatic, adiabatic efficiency here. So 100%. And we'll set, let's say, the extracted fraction at 500 kilopascals. Um, here, I have to be a little bit careful. So if I want this mixer to operate at 500 kilopascals, I have to set the outlet pressure of this pump to 500 kilopascals. So let's go and do this now. So we'll set this to outlet pressure. And 500 kilopascals would be 500,000. And we'll set an efficiency of 100, like this. So now the branch with material stream 14 is at 500 kilopascals, but maybe not the branch at 13. So the, in DWCM, the pressures can be unequal on those two different branches. So let me go and select this turbine there to have the correct output pressure. So I'm going to come here and force the turbine at 19 or, or set the turbine at 19 to be outlet pressure. And the outlet pressure should be 500 kilopascals, 500,000. And it's thermodynamic path is adiabatic. And I'm going to set the adiabatic efficiency at 100. There we go. So now the entering pipe to the splitter is at 500 kilopascals. Well, um, the splitter should be equal pressure on both sides. So that means that the branch here that contains material stream 13, the extracted fraction is 500 kPa. This is 500 kPa. Let us select the mixer. I like just for, it doesn't actually matter in this case since the pressure pressures are equal, but I like to set here under properties. I'm gonna set the pressure calculation mode to be inlet average so that state 15 will be at the average of the pressures of 14 and 13. But since the pressures are equal, in this case, uh, it doesn't actually matter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's see, we've set the output temperature, the extracted fraction. Here, let's set the relative amounts. I'm going to select the splitter. And I'll say that under properties. So let's say we want just um, let's say 5% of the steam to be taken out. Um, so split ratio one and split ratio stream two. This is how much goes into one branch and the other. Let me just make sure which one is one, which one is two. Let's look at the connections. Outlet one is 13. So this 13, this is the um, split ratio. This is corresponding to the split ratio of stream one. So split ratio stream one, I'll set this at 5% or 0 0.05. And stream two then has to be 0 0.95. So 95% of the steam will go straight to the low pressure turbine. Here we'll go and select this. And 5% will be sent back to the mixer. Now we select the low pressure turbine. And let's set our condenser, let's say, at 50 kilopascals. So we're going to select the properties. And then we'll set the outlet pressure of turbine two to be 50,000 pascals or 50 kilopascals. And it's adiabatic. I'll give it an adiabatic efficiency of 100. We'll then select the condenser. And let's set the outlet of the condenser to be just a saturated liquid. Take the properties. And under properties, we'll say this is not heat added or removed. We'll set outlet temperature. 
and nope, sorry, not outlet temperature, but rather, let me reselect it. Actually, you can see that DWCM has resolved the whole flow sheet, but that's not what I want. I want the outlet vapor fraction, there we go, to be zero, exactly. And now that should be it. So now if we come and just press run, I think this was reran already because the green check mark was selected, but let's go and select it. Yep, I've seen some numbers change. So last execution time is 0.27 seconds. And we have all of the different um, numbers there. So pump one takes 0.44 kilowatts, pump two takes 4.73 kilowatts. Uh, I don't actually know what's the total mass flow rate. Let's go and look here on the pump 18. It's one kilogram per second. So this is on the, these numbers, these power number on the basis of one kilogram per second total flow rate. So I should have 0 0.05 kilogram per second under material stream 13. To respect the split fraction, for as soon as this updates, we should see the numbers coming up. And... Come on. This interface is a little bit slow sometimes. And there we go. Indeed, the mass flow is at 0 0.05 kilogram per second. You can see in the uh, lower table. There we go. So now that's a more complicated cycle um, or a more complicated ranking cycle. And uh, the point to take away from this video is that the process is exactly the same as building a simple ranking cycle. The question is only where do you put the recycled block? So in this case, oh, this updated, um, there's a little hidden function. If you double click on the flow sheet area, the WSIM um, sort of rescales the view so that it fills the window nicely. So the takeaway is that it's the exact same process, connecting the different points. And then we've seen we can rotate the different arrows. I could do this just to make it a bit cleaner. Here I have the, the pipe sort of looping in on itself. I could go and rotate three by 180 degrees. But otherwise, it's the same process as building uh, the simple ranking cycle. Uh, we've discovered two new elements, the splitter and the mixer, that allow us to do regeneration. And how I decide where to set the recycle block is we look at all of the possible looped paths that a particle could take. So we saw that fluid going through the cycle could do sort of this upper loop where it goes through the heater, the top turbine, and then it comes back through the regeneration shunt, and then comes back through the top pump. That's one loop. So this loop needs to have a recycle block in, uh, in, in, in its path, let's say, which is the case because the recycle block is here. And then there's a second looped path where a, a particle could go up through the heater, cross both turbines through the condenser, and then come back through both pumps. And that loop also goes through a recycle block. So you want to find the location of the recycle block that minimizes the number of recycle blocks that you use.